Jews around the world just celebrated Yom Kippur, the Jewish Day of Atonement. It comes as the culmination of the High Holy Days, the days of awe, the days of practicing forgiveness, asking for and granting forgiveness, making rights, all of the things that have gone astray in our life in order to finally ask forgiveness and make things right with God on Yom Kippur. Now, usually when this season of the year rolls around, I do try to think about forgiveness. I do try to think about the places in my life that feel off kilter, the people that I need to ask for forgiveness, the things that I need to make amends for. But this year's been a little different. This year has been a little rough. And I find myself unusually in the position of thinking about forgiveness from the other side of the equation, about granting forgiveness. This year, not so long ago, someone who matters very deeply to me did something that was damaging of the relationship. Let's just leave it at that. Who did what doesn't really matter. What matters is that it was hurtful. It involved lying, and lying, I think, is a pretty good indication of something gone well awry in pretty much any human relationship. It's just kind of the bellwether. If there's lying, it's not good. It wasn't good. And so that hard question of forgiveness, where do you go from here? Adrienne Rich, in her poem, Cartographies of Silence, writes, a conversation begins with a lie, and the speakers of the so-called common language feel the ice flow split, the drift apart as if powerless, as if up against a force of nature. The ice flow split the drift apart. That's how it feels. That's how it feels when someone who you love lies to you. It feels like you're one of those sad polar bears on an ice floe in the pictures that are meant to tell you about just how awful global warming is. A little piece of ice and you and a lot of ocean. Salt water for days. It's a time of mourning, and it matters to recognize that time of mourning. To take time to let it wash over you. The salt water, the disappointment, the rage. To sit with that. To let it be. To mourn that the way you thought things were is not the way things are. That shock and humiliation, that sadness, that grief. But then when you've been out on that ice flow long enough, I think it comes time to start paddling in toward shore to see if it's possible to continue that process of mourning with that other person, with the person who hurt you, to say, this is how I feel. This is what's broken. This is what went wrong. And perhaps even to mourn with them, to let them tell you what was so wrong in their lives, so wrong in their heart that they felt pulled to hurtful action. To listen to where they stand now in shame or apology or rage and self-righteousness. It's time to mourn together as much as you can. And maybe that doesn't fix things. 
maybe there is no request for forgiveness from the other person, maybe they're not ready to hear your rage and your pain, maybe there isn't a solution. But you know what, at least you're on the land. You're not stuck out on that ice floe, you're somewhere in the country of the living, in the country of forgiveness, in the country of putting things back together again. And if you're lucky and patient and kind and open, maybe you can find your way to true mutual forgiveness. Maybe you can build something that's stronger than what you had before, something that's more deeply honest, more deeply caring. And maybe you can't. But one way or another, in the country of forgiveness, you move toward atonement, which some people pronounce as at one moment. Becoming one, maybe not with that other person, maybe simply becoming one with yourself, knowing your own grief, knowing your own strength, knowing that you are ready to walk forward into that country of the living.